A lot of work goes into making a TV show successful, but the sad truth is you can have the best actors in the world, a great script, perfect direction, and stunning visuals, but without hype and marketing, few people are actually going to tune in. All of the following shows learned this the hard way, and through perseveration, strong word of mouth, and critical acclaim, eventually clawed the audience they deserved. I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 underhyped TV shows that blew everyone away. Number 10, Barry. Nobody was expecting HBO's Barry to be as good as it was, probably not even HBO. The series, all about the titular hitman who finds himself breaking away from a life of violence and murder after taking a job in Los Angeles, was a sleeper hit in its first season, before going on to gain widespread critical respect in its second year. You can see why as well. Breaking out the barriers of genre and format, Barry accomplishes so much within the regular 30 minute time slot. It always has something unique for the viewer, whether that's impressive or lengthy one shots or surprising moments of deep pathos, and it results in a show that more than deserves its 30 primetime Emmy nominations. Written, directed, and starring Bill Hader, Barry is very evidently a passion project, and that passion is felt in every minute of every episode. It's been over two years now since season two ended, but expect the show to come roaring back to life with more fanfare than ever with season three. Number nine, Broad City. Created by stars Elena Glazer and Abby Jacobson, Broad City started life not as the critically acclaimed sitcom it would become, but a short web series on YouTube made during their time in a New York improv comedy group. The series proved a big online success, especially when TV royalty Amy Poehler mentioned that she was a fan and even turned up in the finale, which boosted its popularity massively. With their run on YouTube over, Glazer and Jacobson got to work on a pitch to make the series into a network sitcom, and with the help of Poehler, they seemed destined for success. Things took a hit though when FX turned it down for, get this, being too girly. Comedy Central eventually picked it up, but did so tentatively and without ordering a full first season. It was released with minimal advertising, but managed to catch the eye of critics and various social media groups, and thus Broad City ended up running for five seasons, and Elena and Abby's relatable mishaps proved to be a massive hit with audiences throughout its run. Which, you know what, ain't bad for a YouTube original. Number 8, Doctor Who. In 1963, a time slot opened for the BBC, and the channel got to work looking for a piece of children's entertainment that would fill the gap between the popular sports program Grandstand and the panel show Jukebox Jury. Producers Sidney Newman, C.E. Webber, and Donald Wilson banded together to bring a filler show to life, and they ended up creating Doctor Who, a fun slice of family entertainment about a time-traveling alien originally intended to be an educational series about history and science. Since it was purposeful designed as passable filler, the BBC weren't too concerned about ratings or even fan reception. And not only did they not market it, but they actually cancelled it before the first episode even aired. I am not kidding. Releasing episodes until the 13th installment made the BBC realise that they could keep it going a little longer, which proved a genius move in hindsight because the show had become an overnight sleeper hit. And save for a brief hiatus, the show has been running consistently for over 50 years, and stands tall as one of the most famous famous TV series ever made. Number 7. Seinfeld Seinfeld has always been described as a show about nothing, and that's exactly why it seemed doomed to fail. Focusing on the mundanity of everyday life from the perspective of four narcissistic, socially incapable New Yorkers, the sitcom was created by star Jerry Seinfeld and writer Larry David, who used the series as an attempt to mix Seinfeld's stand-up with brief side stories about innocuous day-to-day -day happenings. One of the show's producers over at NBC, though, described the show as too New York, and test audiences of the pilot loathed it so much that the network almost cancelled it entirely. But thanks in equal measure to the show show's small gaggle of fans and NBC's inability to find another series to replace it, Seinfeld was able to finish its first season in one piece and received a high enough rating from audiences to justify a second installment which featured some slight creative changes that made it one of the most watched and critically lauded sitcoms of all time. Number 6. It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia might be the most unlikely success story on this list. Created by stars Rob McElhenney, Glenn Howerton, and Charlie Day, the series was originally titled It's Always Sunny on TV, and was shot for nothing on some digital cameras in the trio's own apartments. After some grueling pitches and major rewrites, the original premise was actually centered on three out-of-work actors, but this was too similar to other shows of the time, the trio then got FX on board for one properly financed 
season of the retitled It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. The budget was still crazy low, mind, and FX was worried the dark tone, controversial jokes, and low production design would ruin things right out of the gate. Come the second season, though, when the studio introduced Danny DeVito to the main roster and McElhenney, Howerton, and Day had some time to refine their characters, the show's dark humor, sociopathic characters, and urgent pace, it proved a hit with audiences. So much so that it's been renewed up to its 18th season at the time of recording. Number 5. Breaking Bad It might be hard to believe now, considering that it's often listed as one of the greatest TV shows of all time, but Breaking Bad was initially seen as a major gamble for AMC, and not even an initial hit. Vince Gilligan, a longtime writer of The X-Files, wanted to write a show about a protagonist who became the antagonist of his own story, or in his own words, he wanted to turn Mr. Chips into Scarface. Once he'd figured out the finer details of the plot, the story, the meth lab concept, the supporting characters, he pitched it and secured a deal with AMC, who were initially very reluctant to cast renowned sitcom actor Brian Cranston in the lead role before being convinced by Gilligan to give him a shot. Despite the casting gamble, a disruptive writer's strike, and the unplanned future of the series, Breaking Bad chugged along to huge critical acclaim but few viewers, only becoming a rating smash hit in its final, final episodes. In fact, to put in perspective just how unfathomable the show's later success was, for most of its life, the series struggled to break 2 million viewers. However, as viewers started to binge it and the reviews became so overwhelming, that number started to jump up. And while only 2.9 million viewers turned in for the season 5 premiere, an astonishing 10 million tuned in for its season 5 finale. So, at least it got there in the end. Number 4. Buffy the Vampire Slayer To say that everyone was pessimistic about Buffy the Vampire Slayer would be an understatement. Following on from the 1992 movie, which flopped both critically and commercially, it was a huge surprise that show was greenlit at all, with Joss Whedon as the showrunner. With an all-new cast of characters, a change in setting, and a much darker tone than the film, the series was originally produced by the WB, and seemed to have very little going for it. The cast were all unknown, Whedon was young and inexperienced, and the budget was meager. But within just one season, Buffy the Vampire Slayer acquired a legion of fans and a positive critical reception, so much so that it would run for another six years and inspire an also great spin-off about the vampire with a soul, Angel. These days, Buffy is consistently listed as one of the best shows of all time, and is also considered one of the most academically studied shows ever made, so not bad for a series inspired by such an awful movie. Number 3. Futurama. Matt Groening created comedy gold when he brought The Simpsons to 20th Century Fox, so it stands to reason that anything else the animator wanted to do would get the green light at the network pretty quickly. Enter Futurama in 1999, and Fox had a new potential hit on its hands. Unfortunately, this was during a time when all of the executives at the Fox network were bumbling idiots, and they absolutely hated the show. As a result, there was almost no hype at all in support of the animation, and it was placed in a lousy time slot that saw it preempted by NFL games every Sunday and barely any buzz. Though it did become a huge cult hit, Fox always seemed like they were looking for reasons to cancel it. And cancel it they did, only for fans to then convince them to bring it back before cancelling it yet again, probably just out of spite or something. Adult Swim would give it a proper send-off, but it was a hard-fought one. With accolades under its belt and a dedicated fandom though, Futurama was always the underdog, but boy did it swing for the fences. Number 2. Shit's Creek If you're even remotely online, you'll have been exposed to this TV show. The show surged in popularity in its last year or so, becoming the subject of memes and clips that did the rounds all over the internet. For longtime fans though, this widespread popularity felt deserved after so long championing it as one of the funniest shows on television. With a stacked a lovable cast including Eugene and Dan Levy and the always excellent Catherine O'Hara, the show sees the fall of the Rose family, an outrageously wealthy family who lose everything and have to retreat to the town of Shit's Creek, which they bought on a whim, which is something so many rich people just do in sitcoms. Like Breaking Bad and so many other shows, it was once the series dropped on Netflix that it really took off, breaking out of its niche audience and invading the heart of pop culture. Number 1. The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel If you were lucky enough to find yourself scrolling through the offerings on Amazon Prime in March 2017, you may have stumbled across a little show called The Marvelous Mrs. 
Mrs. Maisel. But if you didn't see it or didn't hear about it from a friend, odds are you just missed it entirely. The series is all about Miriam Midge Maisel and initially her life as a housewife in the late 1950s and early 1960s America. At least that's what it was about in the very beginning, as she quickly favours her dream of becoming a stand-up comedian. Created by Amy Sherman Palladino, the creator of the equally excellent Gilmore Girls, the marvellous Mrs. Maisel could have just been yet another Amazon original that was swept under the rug. Instead though, it was a hit with critics and gained a strong viewership, and now Amazon absolutely markets the hell out of it, even if it's clear that they initially had no idea what they had on their hands. So that's our list, I want to know what you guys think down in the comments below, what do you think about these TV shows, and are there any underhyped ones that you think deserve more attention? While you're down there as well, could you please give us a like, share, subscribe, and head over to whatculture.com for more lists and news like this every single day. Even if you don't though, I've been Josh, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.